After conquering both Japan and America with the Nintendo Entertainment System back in the mid-80s, Nintendo was ready to conquer both again with the follow-up console for the early 90s, the Super Nintendo. Their old console was slowly beginning to seem outdated by both Sega's Mega Drive slash Genesis console and NEC's PC Engine slash TurboGrafx-16 console, as well as arcades and PCs now sporting fresher colors and smoother gameplay. Although it was pretty much in the bag the Super Nintendo would be a success day one, Nintendo needed to make sure the launch and earliest games by them would make Sega and NEC nervous, so all the games were developed by Nintendo EAD, previously known as Nintendo R&D 4, headed by Shigeru Miyamoto and Takashi Tezuka. And needless to say, their games were head-turning. F-Zero, Pilot Wings, the SNES port of SimCity, and at the end of 1991, The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Freaking Past. But the most notable one was the title at launch, and that would pretty much give the Super Nintendo its legacy. Super Mario World. Following Super Mario Bros. 3 ginormous success two years ago in 1988, Nintendo would continue giving the public more Mario goodness only now with better control, better color, and just all in all, better. So what makes Super Mario World so great compared to previous and later Mario games? Well, let's have past me explain. But what makes it so great? It's one basic element, adventure. This is Super Mario World. Okay, that was awful. But he's right. The overworld structure is built to feel more like an adventure compared to Mario 3, which felt more like getting from point A to point B. Mario World is all about finding secrets and alternative paths. Just starting off, you have two different paths to take. The path to open more of the overworld, and a path to find a switch palace, which after completing it, makes all the blocks of that color appear instead of an outline of what should be there. And that's just the beginning of the adventure you'll experience. After beating the first castle, the ability to explore becomes all the more open. You can get to the final boss with Bowser in just minutes because of all the shortcuts in this game. And even some shortcuts can give you a glimpse of what you'll eventually face. Like in Donut Plains, or if you take the secret area, you'll get a glimpse of the Valley of Bowser, the final area of the game. I knew that surprised my three-year-old self. Plus, I love how as you complete levels, the world changes to return Dinosaur Land to its former glory. But adventure is one thing. How's the actual gameplay? Well, it's a Mario game, so what do you expect? New to Mario's arsenal is his Tornado Jump, a pretty great new ability that lets Mario take out enemies in one jump or find secrets hidden beneath breakable blocks. But on top of that, there's the Cape Feather, an almost game-breaking weapon that lets Mario fly indefinitely and take out enemies with ease. And finally, there's Yoshi, Mario's new rideable companion that acts as a second hit for Mario, eats pretty much anything, can stand on spikes, stomp almost anything, can use different colored Koopa shells to gain new abilities, come in different colors, and change the music to a more tribal beat. <laughs> perfect new addition that helped cement Mario World into a classic. Yoshi was an addition Miyamoto wanted in the Mario series ever since the beginning, and the Super Nintendo finally brings that friend we've been missing for so long to the forefront. Yoshi is actually important to the plot, yeah, the least interesting thing in most Mario games. Well, it all started when Mario, the princess, and Luigi went to Dinosaur World for a vacation. They banished Bowser from the Mushroom Kingdom, but Bowser found his way to Dinosaur Land and kidnapped the princess. Along the way, they find Yoshi trapped in an egg, who needs help finding his friends who are also put into eggs and kept in the castles of the Koopalings, who returned from Mario 3, and then disappeared for a while afterwards. So beat the Koopalings and get to Bowser's Coney Island Disco Palace to save the princess. Like I said, not very important. But what is important is the level design. How'd you like that segue? And this game has some of the most interesting level design in a Mario game next to Mario 3. Compare this to the later New Super Mario Bros. series, which just keeps things passable yet forgettable for all four games, whereas 95% of the levels in World feel so unique that you can't forget about them. Even when they begin repeating ideas like the underwater level, or the cave level, or even the castle levels, they all stand out in some way. The most notable levels that do stay the same for the most part are the ghost houses. Yeah, they can be pretty predictable, there's lots of boos, maybe in a circle, maybe there's a giant one, you gotta think out of the box to find the exit. Even then, they can stand out sometimes with giant green bubbles or boos that turn into blocks. Interesting biology. At least the ghost house serve a purpose as the only way to save next to the castles. Oh, did I forget to mention about the option to save? 
Coming a long way, Mario's games now have a battery backup, making Mario 3 seem so old-timey in comparison. And sure enough, this is a game that deserves it. It really is reliable to play for a little bit, take a break, and then come back later. But getting back into level design and multiple paths, there's nothing quite like the joy of finding Star World and finding the multicolor Yoshis and exits to make easy warp points. But the funniest example of a secret path in this game is the one in the Valley of Bowser. That takes you to the back of the castle, allowing you to skip actually playing most of the final level and just get you to the final boss fight with Bowser. Now that's funny. In fact, this game is funny a lot of the time. After beating the boss of the castle, Mario destroys the castle afterwards in new and hilarious ways. Especially this part where the castle flies into this hill's head. Wait, does that count as a head? And it gains a bandage. And then you get to the overworld, and the hill still has a bandage. That's freaking great! But hey, speaking of boss fights, they're easily the weakest point of this game. Some are not awful, I like Lemmy and Wendy's boss battle, but everything else is just painfully easy, especially you, Ludwig. And especially the fortresses that contain these Triceratops whose only strategy is going around in a circle called Resners. Pretty early reference to Nine Inch Nails before the group really blew up in popularity. Hmm. But all the so-so boss fights are worth it in the end when you get to face Bowser himself and he really pulled out all the stops for this fight making it easily one of the best Bowser boss fights of the Mario series, period. But then after you beat him, what now? Well, hidden in Star Road is one last area of the game, the Special Zone. The last eight levels of the game that can push the challenge of Super Mario World into the likes of ROM hacks, making it much harder and each containing some dated adjective that makes it all the more lovable. Except for you, Tubular. No one likes you. And what do you get after beating this challenge? Dinosaur World enters fall and, uh, what the hell? Miyamoto said that Super Mario World was his favorite Mario game, but also said it felt rushed, which in my opinion is completely wrong. This game is packed to the brim with excellent level design, fantastic new innovations, and even some great humor. There's even some stuff that I took for granted that you'll be hard pressed to find in any other platformer. Like, you can save a power-up if you collect another one, and one of the many secrets in this game is a refresh zone to power yourself back up. Nintendo packaged Super Mario World with every Super Nintendo in America to make sure Nintendo EAD's great project would reach more homes and convince people to buy the system with the promise of a new Mario game inside, for free. And I really can't think of a better game. If there's only one game you would play for the Super Nintendo, it would be Super Mario World. And that makes it one of the best video games of the 90s.